I'm currently in the middle of refurbishing a Akai MG614 4-track and many parts of that unit, especially the transport, the mecha block as it's called in the service manual, are extremely corroded. And so I thought I'd make a separate video just to show you the process that I've settled on to deal with the corrosion. Uh, here you can see two brackets that hold the mecha block into the chassis of the MG614. This is before processing and this is after processing. And I could probably get it even cleaner than this, but you can see that there's a really big difference. The way I've handled this kind of thing before is just by using white vinegar, a substance you've probably got in your kitchen cupboard. And what I tend to find is if you leave something like this soaked in the white vinegar overnight, then this comes off pretty easily might even wipe off or maybe you use a little bit of uh, wet dry sandpaper afterwards. The two big disadvantages of doing that are first of all you need to have a container big enough to soak this and the other is that it smells. I mean it only smells vinegar but it's quite a strong smell and you know it gets on your fingers and everything. What I've discovered in this process is by using this AMS oil 0W slash 30. So really this is quite a thin premium motor oil. This cost me maybe 16, 17 pounds from a specialist auto shop uh, here in the UK. I've put some of that into a needle dispenser. You can buy these separately from eBay and so on, but this is just an empty one of these. Uh, the fader lube that I use in most of the switches and faders and so on and four tracks. That oil was actually recommended to me by guy called Sam Palermo, who if you're in a lot of like real to real reporter studio, Facebook groups, forums, that kind of thing, you might recognize his name. He used to work for TIAC and has worked as a repair technician for decades and um, you know still runs a repair shop. I think he's Chicago based, but anyway, when he says stuff in forums, I tend to listen. He was one of the more reliable sources of information when I was trying to pull myself up by the bootstraps learning this stuff. But anyway, he recommended this stuff for getting into like 12 volt motors if they're a bit corroded, it improves the wear and flutter. But what I've found is whatever the extra ingredients are that differentiate this from a cheaper motor oil, it, it eats away at rust very quickly. And so what I can do is put that on there and start to agitate it with an old scalpel. And rather than having to leave it overnight and then have my fingers smelling of vinegar, I can use this stuff straight away. So. Let's just film this. What I'm going to do, put down some paper towels, just in case any of this mess gets over, but then I can use the needle dispenser and just put a layer of this right across this rusty surface. Then I'm going to use the scalpel almost like I'm shaving and or colouring in, right? So at an angle, just start agitating the surface. It doesn't come up absolutely immediately, but what I find is within about a minute with some agitation, then it does start to, yeah, look, I mean, how long have I been speaking there? Not long at all. You see these strokes are now moving the rust out of the way and uh, revealing the metal beneath. So I can sort of spread that oil around, just with the flat of the blade there. Maybe add in a little bit more there. Now at a certain point, give that a wipe with another paper towel. And quite a lot of that's come up already. Then I can get wet dry sandpaper. So this is 400 grit, I and mean, if you wanted to make that really shiny, you could use even higher grit than that. But now I can apply some of this oil directly to there. Go with the circular motions. around the edge here, you can get them some extras head down. Kind of rusty on the join there, so you can fold this in half and then put 
push in there. I guess this video's been running about seven or eight minutes. So to go from, it was worse on this side, wasn't it? To a surface like that, seven or eight minutes, it's really not bad. And you can see you've gone at it longer there. I could get it better looking than that, but like I say, it's an internal bracket. That's about as much as it needs for a bracket that you're not gonna see unless you take the unit apart. And uh, I've had no ill effects getting a little bit of this oil on my skin. It doesn't smell much. I'm not an expert on what we might put on there afterwards to get any oily residue off. I mean, most of it does seem to come off just by wiping with like some paper towel. You could probably use a microfiber cloth, probably use some isopropyl and get even more of it off. So if I... Yeah, more of it's coming off with that. But anyway, that's been my method. And uh, the good thing about this sort of scraping with the scalpel idea is we'll try and cut in some footage of what this mechanism from the MG614 looked like before I got in at it with the scalpel. Now I've really only ever seen that kind of rust on a car that's been left to rot in a scrapyard before. And I mean, look at all this stuff. It's not so suitable for sandpaper though you could get in there like that but most of that was cleaned up just by getting in the scalpel and the oil. Likewise, this was very rusty and there's a little bit of the rust still left, but I've mostly cleaned it up just by applying that and then going like this. And in this case, to get around all these plastic parts, I just used a Q-tip to soak up the excess oil. Fiddly mechanical parts, I've been able to kind of refurbish pretty successfully using that method. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon.